How's it going everybody? My name is Lucky Buns, and in today's video I'm going to be breaking down all the events for the month of February in Pokemon Go. Now with that being said, as always, if you guys do end up enjoying this video, please make sure to smash that like button down below, it helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So we have one more month of the timeless travel season, and the current season bonuses are going to be as follows. We're going to get guaranteed extra large candy from trades, so make sure to do as many trades as you can during this month. You have to be level 31 or higher in order to get the extra large candy though. Now you also get an increased chance to get extra large rare candy from 5 star raids in person only. Now personally speaking I can definitely attest to getting more extra large rare candy in general from just doing in person raids, it doesn't have to be like specifically 5 star raids, I've just noticed an increase compared to I would say previous months, so if you guys haven't been doing in person raids I do strongly recommend it. At the very least just use your daily free pass is what I'm trying to say. Next up we have the Shadow Legendary Pokemon from Team Go Rocket, so we'll start off with Giovanni's current rotation which is going to be Kyogre, this recently just got put into rotation I believe like a few days ago from the uh, Taken Treasures event. Now if you guys want to know how good Shadow Kyogre actually is in the game, then check out this video in the top right hand corner right now, there's going to be a link in the description down below as well, that contains a full analysis including how you should actually go about stacking and saving your Super Rocket Radars for the future. As always, if you guys have any further questions, I do my best to respond to all comments, so just leave them down below. Now we also have a Shadow Legendary Pokemon available in 5 star raids, specifically on the weekend, and that is going to be Articuno once again. It kind of seems like Niantic is stuck in a loop with these Shadow Legendary birds, like Articuno has come back, I think this is like the third time now. So uh, yeah, honestly, I'm sure you're probably tired of it. I'm personally very tired of it. There isn't a lot of meta relevance with Articuno, but if you guys are a shiny shadow hunter, then I can kind of see the appeal here if you haven't gotten it yet. Like usual though, with shadow raids, you can only do these in person, so that's kind of a big roadblock for most of the player base. Now the research breakthrough is going to be the same as the last two months. We're going to have Galarian Mr. Mime, Galarian Weezing, Jangmo O, Lapras, Furfru, and Gumi. All those Pokemon that I just mentioned can be shiny. Next up, we're going to move on over to the legendary raid rotation. Now this one is actually really weirdly set up as in we don't actually have a raid rotation for legendary Pokemon from February 1st to February 15th we only have a mega raid rotation during that time which I'll go over when we cover the mega raid section so that being said, Darkrai is going to be our first Legendary Raid starting on February 15th and going until February 20th. Now the rotation cycle is going to be 10am to 10am your local time for all these Legendary Rotations, so just keep that in mind. And Shiny Forms are going to be available on every single Legendary Pokemon I'm about to mention. Now going back to Darkrai, this is a good Dark type attacker, but we are still waiting on its signature move, Dark Void. I'm not really sure why they didn't release this during this rotation, given that we are going to have the Sinnoh Tour, but for some reason we still don't have Dark Void on Darkrai. Darkrai is a mythical Pokemon, which means that you guys can only get it from doing raid battles. So in my opinion, chasing the Hundo and then using an Elite TM later when Dark Void does eventually get released is still a viable strategy, not to mention getting the Shiny Form as well. I personally still need the Shiny Form, but I do already have the Hundo. I do imagine that when Dark Void does eventually get released, Darkrai is going to be on top with uh, Tyranitar in terms of overall meta relevance, but as of right now, it's just not the best Dark type attacker in comparison, but it's still a pretty good one. I wouldn't say it's like terrible, it's just uh, Tyranitar with Brutal Swing is a much better pick at this point. Not to mention we also have Shadow Tyranitar with Brutal Swing. That thing is a monster. Next up we're gonna have a bunch of legendary Pokemon only available for like a single day. So we're gonna have Cresselia from February 20th to February 21st. Now the only reason to raid this Pokemon is if it had Grass Knot, which it will, but only during raid hour. So I'll talk about that more later. Now following Cresselia from February 21st to February 22nd, we're going to have Uxi, Mess Spirit, and Azelf all available in different regions around the world. They're gonna be available in the same regions that they're always available available in, I don't know why they don't actually switch them, but uh, Uxie is going to be available in the Asia Pacific region, so the APAC region, Mess Spirit is going to be available in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and India, and Azelf is going to be available in the Americas and Greenland. Now unfortunately none of these Pokemon are going to be meta relevant, but if you want to get that shiny form then you're going to have to use remote raid passes, which is probably going to cost you a decent amount, and you're limited to only using 5 per day, so yeah, kind of unfortunate, but uh, it is what it is, right? This is Niantic's vision of the game. Now following that trio we're going to have Heatran available from February February 22nd to February 23rd, and the same thing that I said about Cresselia, if it had Magma Storm, its legacy move, then it would be worth raiding, but that's only going to be available during the raid hour, so we're going to talk about that more later. Now Giratina Origin Form is going to come right after that from February 23rd to February 26th. Giratina is actually one of the best ghost type attackers in the game, regardless if it actually has Shadow Force or not. So in this certain scenario, I would say that it is actually worth raiding, regardless if you're going to get Shadow Force, which you will be able to during the raid hour, like the other two but in many situations, Shadow Ball is actually preferred over Shadow Force. And given that Shadow Force is a legacy move, if you TM it away, you won't be able to get it back unless you use an Elite TM. So you kind of want to get some Giratina with Shadow Ball, 
which is the non-elite TM move, and then you want to get some Giratina with Shadow Force. Now in between the Giratina rotation, we're also going to have Dialga and Palkia plus their origin forms on February 24th to February 25th. At the same time, this is going to be when the Global Sinotaur is going to be taking place. Now I don't really know how these raids are going to work combined with Giratina also factored in. I would hope that I would mainly just be seeing Dialga and Palkia around, but I mean I guess Giratina is also a good option to have as well. Um, either way, both of these legendary Pokemon are going to be available with their origin forms, and they do have play in their regular forms in the Master League as well as the raid slash gym meta as top dragon type attackers, but I can't really speak too much to their origin forms just yet, but I will say that you definitely want to grind out as much candy as possible on these Pokemon because their origin forms are going to have special effects, which I'll talk about in a later video when I go over the Sinotaur more in detail. That should be coming out in maybe like the next two weeks or so, but yeah, the origin forms are going to have special effects. I would actually say grind out more Palkia candy than Dialga candy because it seems like Palkia has the better bonus. Now for some odd reason we're going to get Cresselia and Heatran both available back in raids from February 26th to March 1st. I don't know why we didn't just get some different Pokemon in that rotation pool but uh, yeah Cresselia and Heatran are both going to be back and neither of them are going to have their exclusive movesets so I don't even know why you would raid them during this time. Now like I mentioned earlier a lot of these Pokemon won't have access to their legacy moves during normal hours but they are going to have them available during their raid hours. I'm not sure who decided that this was a good idea but yeah this was a terrible idea. I mean, only having the legacy moves available for one single hour, that kind of sucks. But either way, if you guys want to uh, focus on getting these with their legacy movesets, the three ones that I would pay attention to are Giratina with Shadow Force, Cresselia with Grass Snot, and Heatran with Magma Storm. So let me go over this once again. For Cresselia that actually knows Grass Snot is going to be available on February 20th from 6 to 7 p.m. your local time. For Heatran that's going to be on February 27th, 6 to 7 p.m. And then for Giratina Origin Form that's going to be on February 23rd, 6 to 7 p.m. That is the only time that you guys can actually get them with their Legacy movesets or you can Elite TM them, but again, like if you want to get them with their Legacy movesets, it's going to be the best time to do it. Darkrai also no Sludge Bomb during its raid hour, but again, Sludge Bomb on Darkrai, yeah, that doesn't really do much for it. So with that being said, that's going to be our Legendary Raid rotation for the month of February. I'm not sure who put this together, but it's literally all over the place, and I don't really love it that much, especially when it comes down to the Legacy movesets. I don't know why they're just not available for the entire rotation, and they're just available during raid hours, but whatever. I mean, let me know how you feel about that in the comment section down below. Now before we dive into the next section of this video, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, which is going to be my second channel. So for those of you guys who enjoy Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content, or just in general Pokemon main series content, I've been uploading a lot more videos on the second channel with the new DLC release for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, so if you guys haven't checked out my second channel yet, I would highly encourage you to do so. There's tons of helpful content on there, very similar to what I do on the main channel right here. Next up, let's talk about the Mega Raids. Now, we did talk about the only rotation being available from the start of February to the middle of February being Mega Raid Pokemon, and that is going to be Mega Latios and Mega Latias. Both of these Pokemon are going to be available at the same time. Now of these two, Mega Latias is going to be a much more challenging raid boss to take down, but in terms of meta relevance, Mega Latios is going to be the stronger option to go with. With that being said though, there's definitely stronger options out there in general for both a Psychic type attacker as well as a Dragon type attacker, so I mean honestly, I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about, you know, getting the best IVs on these Pokemon. Now what am I trying to say here exactly? Should you not raid them? Should you raid them? Well, you should probably raid them to get the initial Mega Energy like I always recommend, but if you guys already have a Mega Rayquaza, then it's not really going to do you that much good because the candy bonuses that you get from Mega Rayquaza are Dragon, Flying, and Psychic and the candy bonuses that you get from Mega Latios and Mega Latios are going to be Dragon and Psychic. So Mega Rayquaza actually gets an extra bonus, but I understand that many people don't even have Mega Rayquaza, so if that's the case, then definitely make sure to raid these two. Now following that, we're going to have Mega Absol from February 15th to February 22nd, and after I believe over two years of this Pokemon just not being in the game, possibly even three years, this Mega is finally returning to Pokemon Go. Now there isn't a lot of practicality with it if I'm being completely honest here, but as someone who never got enough energy during its initial rotation, I think, I'm I have to see it back in rotation now. It's one of the few Megas that I don't actually have at Mega Level 3. So when it comes down to it, it's really not the best Dark-type Pokemon out there. Mega Houndoom and Mega Tyranitar are both going to be better, and they also benefit from dual typings as well. But given how often this Pokemon comes into rotation, I would not sleep on this one, or you may not get it again for another couple of years. Now finally, we have Mega Garchomp available from February 22nd to March 1st. This is one of the best Dragon and Ground-type attackers in the game, but you will need Earth Power to run it as a Ground-type attacker, which is a legacy move. I would personally 
rather use an Elite TM on Primal Grotto to get Precipice Blades though, so I mean, if you had to pick between the two, that's what I would go with. Don't waste an Elite TM on Earth Power if you guys want to build a Groudon in the future or you haven't already built one, or maybe you already have one built, I don't know. Now with that being said though, in terms of a Dragon type attacker, Mega Garchomp is actually pretty close to Mega Rayquaza. It's better than most of the other Dragon type Megas in the game, so when it comes down to this, that's what I would probably go with instead. Not to mention you don't have to use any Elite TMs, which is a huge plus. Basically though, big picture here, Mega Garchomp is one of the best mega pokemon you guys can get in the game do not sleep on this it is totally worth rating for now as always i like to go through some general information for newer returning players watching this video before we wrap up this section so for those of you guys who don't know you only need to evolve a mega pokemon once before getting access to their cooldown period moving forward you're also going to get more extra large candy when your mega pokemon gets to mega level 3 which is unlocked after 30 days of mega evolution additionally when you complete mega raids you're also going to get guaranteed charge tms from doing this so my recommendation is always to do at least one to two raids to get that initial Initial mega energy, and you're gonna get free charge TMs at the same time, so win win. Now, since we already touched on raid hour earlier, I'm not gonna go over this again, but we do need to go over the elite raid hour, which is gonna take place on February 14th. Yes, it's Valentine's Day, and that is going to feature a new Pokemon, Enamorous, in its incarnate form. This is a Pokemon from Legends Arceus, and it's gonna be the first time it's gonna be available in this game. I would imagine that the timing of this event is extremely inconvenient for the majority of the player base. It's not only a work day on a weekday, but it's also Valentine's Day. So for those of you out there who are in a relationship, I cannot imagine why you would prioritize this Pokemon, who I don't even believe is actually meta relevant, compared to not only your job, but also dinner plans with your significant other. So for those of you guys out there who are feeling FOMO that you're not going to be able to get this Pokemon because of other responsibilities, don't worry about it too much. It will eventually come back into rotation with its shiny form. Just remember that. It's just a matter of being patient. I would love to hear your own thoughts about this Elite Raid Hour in the comment section down below. Please let me know what you guys think about this one because man, I could not think of a worse time to host this. Moving forward though, let's talk about the upcoming events for this month. Now all event windows are going to be based on your local time zone, so just keep that in mind. So on February 4th from 2 to 5 p.m., we're going to have Chansey Community Day. Now, personally speaking, I am very excited about this calm day. I mean, Chansey is such a good gym defender because of the decay system. The next event after that is going to take place from February 5th to February 11th, and that is going to be the Lunar New Year from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. respectively. Now, after that, we're going to have Go Battle Day, I think the last one of this season, on February 10th for the entire day. Make sure that you guys do go through and get your battles done, even if you don't really care about GBL. I'm going to leave a link to a video in the top right hand corner as well as in the description down below that'll show you how to get over 400,000 Stardust just doing Go Battle Day, no premium passes or anything, 100% free to play. So make sure that you guys go and get this done. Seriously, it is one of the best times to grind Stardust. From February 13th to February 15th, we're going to have the Carnival of Love from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. respectively. Now, I don't know what this has to entail, but I would imagine it's just going to be a lot of pink Pokemon like it normally is during Valentine's Day. Now, from February 16th to February 18th, we're going to have the Sinnoh Tour in Los Angeles. It's going to be an in-person event, although we do typically get some global bonuses as well. I don't know if they're going to do that this weekend or the next weekend weekend because that's when we actually have the global Sinnoh tour but we'll have to see what happens uh, we are going to have a Sinnoh tour event though from February 19th to February 23rd 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. respectively and then of course as I just mentioned the global Sinnoh tour is going to be on February 24th and February 25th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day. Now, for those who don't know, because I didn't really make an announcement, I might make a separate video on this, but I will be attending the Sinnoh Tour in LA because that's actually where I'm from, so I can just drive down to it. My event day is going to be on Saturday, and I'm going to be starting at the golf course. So for those of you out there who are going to be attending the Sinnoh Tour in person, especially on Saturday, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you guys want to, like, meet up or do a trade or something like that, let me know as well. Maybe I can put something small together. I can't really imagine many of you guys do want to meet up with me in person, though, so... I'm probably not going to do anything, but if you see me walking around, you know, all the typical Lucky Buns look on, the glasses, the long hair, the hat, it's pretty easy to spot me out. If you want to do like a trade or just come say hi, I would love that. Like, I always appreciate the fan interactions a ton. It doesn't happen very often, and that's kind of on me because I don't put myself in front of the camera anymore, but still, I always really enjoy those, and again, I always like to get back to the fans as much as I can. I got some really good Pokemon if you do want to trade with me, so just keep that in mind as well. Now, finally, let's go over the spotlight hours for this month. These are going to take place every Tuesday 
Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. local time. Now for every single Pokemon I'm about to talk about, they are going to have their shiny forms available, so just keep that in mind. So on February 6th, we're going to have Dratini with the special bonus being 2 times catch experience. Now Dratini is one of the best possible Pokemon you guys can get during a spotlight hour. When evolved to Dragonair, it has really good play in the Great League now, and when evolved to Dragonite, it has play in the Great League, the Ultra League, and the Master League. So it's going to be a fantastic time to grind some Dratini and get some good IV spreads for PvP. And not only is Dragonite good in PvP, but it's also a solid raid slash gym attacker to build as well. And because I mentioned that you could use it in Master League, you're going to benefit from dual functionality off building a Dragonite with the perfect IV spread or possibly even a 98. Either way, what I'm trying to say here is that Dratini is going to give you so many options for different builds in different metas. Now when it comes down to the bonus, while it is nice, I wouldn't actually recommend using Lucky Eggs just because it's only 2 times catch experience and we typically get three times catch experience on calm days. But with that being said, I would definitely try to focus on getting as many Dratini as possible, opposed to your precision for excellent throws, because the more Dratini you catch, the better chance you have of getting Great League spreads, Ultra League spreads, and then possibly even the Hundo for Master League. Our next spotlight hour is going to be on February 13th, that is going to be for Muna with the special bonus two times catch candy. Now, unfortunately, I cannot really see a reason to even participate in this one unless you want the shiny. Muna and its evolved form aren't used for anything, and two times catch candy is isn't really going to help you that much during this event. Now for some odd reason there's no spotlight hour for the 20th, which I just thought was really weird, but yeah, there's no spotlight hour on the 20th, just take it for what it is. But we are going to have technically a double spotlight hour on the 27th, maybe that's why. That is going to be Sandshrew plus Alolan Sandshrew, with the special bonus being 2 times transfer candy plus an increased chance of extra large candy when transferring Pokemon. Now both forms of Sandshrew will be available like I just mentioned, but only the Alolan one is actually going to be relevant in Great League and Ultra League. Now going back to the bonus though, this is actually kind of unique as we typically don't get an increased chance of getting extra large candy from these transfers, but it's kind of nice to see. We don't know what the percentage actually is though, so I can't say how good of a bonus it's going to be, and typically when Niantic doesn't disclose things, it's not great. But either way, if you guys have been saving extra legendary Pokemon, now might be the time to transfer them. So what I would do is I would create a search tag, group together all of your rare Pokemon and extra legendary Pokemon, and bonus points if you mirror trade them with someone beforehand because we do have extra large guaranteed candy from trades, so if you trade with them and then you transfer them later, you can get even more candy that way. But in conclusion guys, that's pretty much going to be it for February, it is looking jam packed this month. It's usually always pretty busy though with the generational tours, and there's just lots of Pokemon to hunt, there's plenty of good events, and some pretty good spotlight hours too. There's definitely a lot going on this month, but as always, I would love to hear if there's anything that you guys are personally looking forward to, so let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, if you want to check out some more content, I'm going to recommend these two videos right here. But before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you all real soon in the next one.